Hello and welcome to Rebels Radio latest interview. I'm joined by Joint Slough Town Manager Neil Baker. How are you now? Uh, yeah, very well, John. A little bit hungover. Good. Um, well, I'm sure you were celebrating last night after the FA Trophy fixture and victory yesterday at Margate. How was your journey down? Yeah, it was a good journey, actually. Um, no, no problems on the M25. And, uh, you know, we got there, uh, I think, just, just before half past one. So, uh, yeah, really good timing, really good trip. Um, Plenty of excitement in the build-up to the game? Yeah, there was. I think um, you could tell on the coach that the, the lads were really up for it. And there was a real good vibe. Uh, on the coach and a uh, bit of a t- change of personnel as well this week obviously a couple of key big players you know both in and around the squad yeah. have been lost but the boys as you say were in good spirits yeah absolutely I think um, you know obviously the, you know we've lost the two players this week but um, you know f- uh, life goes on unfortunately you know and, and we have to keep keep going and to be fair the lads are really really buoyant on the coach and um, you know we, we enjoy our coach journeys and uh, yeah it was another another good one um, so an interesting selection kind of headache a few injuries Adrian Sear not available Ben Edwards still injured yeah. um, so you and obviously you'd been down to watch Margate Maidstone earlier in the season in yeah. front of a bumper crowd and, and kind of you and unders between you had set out a game plan what was, what was that? Well the way uh, Margate looked to play is say, uh, as soon as the keeper gets the ball they're, they're two centre half split um, they push the, the two full backs on another 15 yards and and they normally have a sort of anchor in midfield that goes and tries to get the ball. So we'd we'd made the decision that we would push our uh, would go with a three at the back and push our wing back wing backs on and um, push them onto their full backs almost. Um, McClurgy would go and do the the sort of uh, deepest uh, player, you know, deepest midfielder, and the two forwards would just split on the two centre halves. And you know what what that that stopped them from doing was playing. Um, and sort of made them go a little bit longer because we wanted them to, you know, um, play long against us because we felt that we could deal with that. Would it have been the same formation had Dobbo not been suspended and injured? Uh, good question. I think it probably would have done. Um, we talked about uh, three five two a while back um, when we went. Obviously, when we went up to the Maidstone game. Obviously, you know that that's that's helped with you know, bringing Billy in and, and whatever else. Um, it's something that we've talked about. Um, myself, John, myself, and John used to play in a three for years, so it's it's not something that we we don't like. It's just something that the personnel hasn't hasn't really dictated that formation. But um, I don't know. It's a difficult one because you know obviously Dobbo is a winger. However, we actually both believe that he could do that job in in the midfield as well. So. Um, I think we probably would have gone with that formation. It'll be interesting to see if that plays out in the future. I'm um, talking of playing three five two. It's obviously interesting and easy to put it down on paper and up against how you think Margate potentially going to play. It's a different thing putting it out there on grass. So how were you happy with how the start went? Yeah, I mean they they started they started probably quite well. Um, um, Alex made a very good save. Uh, it was near post after about five minutes, and and then I think Charlie Allen had an outrageous bit of skill where he dinked it over the centre half and. And had a had a volley, but um, after that sort of five five ten minutes, we uh, we settled down and obviously scored, you know, with our with one of our first attacks, and and we settled down really, and and uh, really grew into that the formation. I thought the wing backs were exceptional. Um, you know, they both got loads of, loads of energy, so so they can do that perfectly. I thought the three centres were excellent. Um, you know the midfield boys and the front boys. You know it was a real, real good performance. You know we were delighted with Tom Moran. Um, thought he came in and was exceptional um, in that holding role. To be honest, yeah, you had to make a change. Um, obviously after Scott Harris again combined well with Eddie Smith to put you two up. Mm. Um, unfortunately, Clergy went in looked like a kind of a twisted knee, dead leg sort of situation, um, and he he was taken off just you know just before half time. Yeah, um, that must have uh, you know gone against your plans yeah absolutely you know Jay's Jay's a big player for us you know he he's a, he's a hard worker and you know he's somebody that we you know we, we love having in there and you know to lose him was a big blow um, you know however you know same same way as what I've discussed about Dobbo being able to play that midfield role um, Jake come in and done done just as well you know if we Delighted with Jake, thought he'd come in and you know put in a real good shift. And you know, yeah, it is a big blow to lose Clergy, and but hopefully, it's not too serious. We're hoping it is just a dead leg as opposed to you know a knee problem. I think first off, we thought it was a another knee injury, um, but we've got fingers crossed that it is just a dead leg, yeah. And then the uh, Margate started to press a little bit more. There was a few 
challenges flying in left, right and centre from yeah. both teams. Um, then Alan also then just got injured in the end of uh, what was a very long first half. Yeah. Um, who was, he was quite bright early on, kind of faded towards the end of the first half, but uh, a decent player. He's a very good player. We, um, we, we went and watched. Um, he actually played fun enough right back against Maidstone, um, you know, which definitely doesn't you know, um, show off his abilities. You know, he's, a, he's an exceptional midfielder. You know, I think he's got 12, 13 goals already from midfield this season, which is a you know, ridiculous record. Um, you know, so, yeah, you know, them losing him is obviously a big blow for them. Um, you know, we thought that you know there was there was no malice in in the incident with him. But Stuart um, Cash, I understand, was on, Cash was on. Yeah, on the yeah, yeah. Stuart Stuart got himself sent off for something he said to the linesman. I think he uh, he felt that um, Guy had done something to him. Um, funny enough, we spoke to um, uh, the lad after the game, and he said, "No, there was no no problem at all." You know, he said, "You know, he just got caught." So, you know, um, we're a little bit disappointed with. Um, you know, a number of decisions first off, you know, with the referee and I actually spoke to him after the game. I spoke to him at half time and after the game and, and I said, you know, I said, you know, normally when you're two nil up, it's very rare that you sort of go over and talk to a referee because normally you're in, you know, you're in a pretty good mood. But I've just felt that he was very um, uh, lenient um, and I felt he let a number of challenges go on our lads and uh, he, he gave them a number of free kicks. Was he lenient both ways? Well, I, I know. I thought he was giving them more. I thought he was giving them more. Um, you know, I, I felt that he, he didn't really give us an awful lot at all in that first half, and uh, there was a couple of challenges that we, you know, we were, you know, desperately disappointed that we didn't get a free kick, and you know, but that's what it is. So you stayed in at two 0 at half time. What did yeah. you say to the lads? Well, we just we just went in and you know praised them for their first forty five minutes, and 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 just sort of said, you know, you've got to go and do it, give exactly the same second half. You know, we knew that that uh, Margate would have to come out and have a right go at us and, and we just had to make sure that we were disciplined and uh, kept our shape and, and you know when we had the ball just do the right things at the right times so I thought we actually came out second half and you know we were excellent you know we, we started I think we had three or four chances in the first sort of five ten minutes of the second half which we could have actually put the game to bed um, mm. Always that third critical goal you talk of. Yeah, well, you know, we talked about it on Tuesday night, you know, that if they had gone and got uh, the goal, then, you know, they could have got back into the game or if we'd gone and got a third, you know, it, it would have probably killed the game. Um, but, you know, Margate, we're always going to have plenty of the ball and, and stuff like that. However, we didn't just sit back and, and soak things up. We were, we, we were getting at them and, you know, we had a number of chances and, you know, I, I felt that we were, we were actually comfortable. It was as comfortable as our, you know... Me and John have felt for a little while in, in one of our performances, I have yeah. to say. As you say, Margate had you know a, a decent amount of the possession, but you always looked dangerous and you always looked threatening and, and Margate didn't really create any clear t- chances or test no. luggage too much. No, I mean, uh, I think Alex made one or two saves second half, but um, I, I felt that we were under control. You know, I thought the back back three um, were superb. I mean, they, they ended up pushing three up after probably 20 minutes and... And uh, so sort a of guy asked us what, what we'd do. And we just said, we'll just match them up and we'll go 3v3. Um, and that's what we did. And, and um, I just felt that we were comfortable. I felt we were comfortable. And um, Brownie actually turned around and said, oh, you know, we could, we could play for another half hour and we won't score today, you know. And I mean, I don't know if that's a, you know, a criticism of these strikers or, or the fact that we were, we were keeping them out. But at the end of the day, you know, we've kept a clean sheet at one of the, the favourites and probably one of the strongest sides at step three and you know we were we were exceptional yesterday. Yeah, Margate at home haven't failed to score to you know in too many matches this season. It's just testament, as you say, to I think one to eleven playing pretty well for you. Um nice to see Johnny Dyer having a little late run out as well. Yeah, no, we we got good news that he uh he was okay to um come back in and you know <laughs> all of a sudden you've got three, you know, great strikers because uh Eddie Smith's come back a different person. You know, he's he's been exceptional. His work rate's been really, really good. Scott Harris has been ridiculously good. Um, you know, I think he's been exceptional for the for a number of weeks now. You know, he's if you include the two goals at Banbury, he's got nine goals already for the season for us. Um, he got three at Ascot. You know, he's he's uh, he's strong. He's bullying defenders and. You know, and, and then you've got Johnny Dice, you've got three excellent forwards, you know, which is which does give us a headache, but it's a good headache. 
Um, overall performance, who were your strong players last night? If you could single anyone out, you've already talked about Tom Moran. Is there any other people who, above all the rest, deserve a little bit of extra plaudits for their for their? No, I, d- I don't think so. I think uh, I think from one to you know the well, every, everyone that got on the pitch, I thought were, were excellent yesterday. There was uh, there was no you know no performances that weren't up to standards, and and uh, I think it's very harsh to s- separate anyone because they 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 played as a team yesterday and. And they work so hard, and and you know, delight, delighted that they've done that. I mean, you know, it's important that we we follow that up at Paulton, um, you know, because it's all very well going to do it at Margate, but you, you know, you need to make sure that we we put those type of performances in more often than not. You're not going to be able to do it week in week out, but you know, we want to we want to you know put a number of those in this season. As you say, uh, no game, no midweek game this week. So um, I take it two training sessions for the boys. Yeah, we'll do. Um, um, a session on Tuesday, um, probably up at Farnham Park, um, and then we will train again at the Polish club on Thursday. So, um, yeah, you know, it, you know, we're, everything's in preparation now for Poulton. You know, we can we can enjoy the win. We can enjoy the fact that we're in the draw, and you know, we can wait to find out who we've got tomorrow. But um, you know, now the focus is is right on Poulton Rovers. Anyone you particularly fancy again? Would you like another big name? Home tie, away tie? Uh, to be honest, I don't really care. <laughs> um, you know, it, this is an absolute bonus, you know, because when this was drawn, um, you know, they are a strong side and, and, and you know, you, you can look at that and think, well, we've got the toughest draw possible at that stage, you know, to get Margate away. So, so for us, it's a bit of a bonus that we're, we're in the next round and, you know, maybe hopefully we can get, you know, get through another couple of rounds or, or so, you know, and, and maybe... Maybe get a conference side, which would be superb for us. But I don't, I don't really care, you know, home, away, um, whether it's a side, you know, in our league or Ryman Prem or, you know, league below, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't sort of matter to us. Hopefully not Truro away. No, no, Truro away, I don't think would do anyone no. any good. Um, in terms of injuries, um, obviously you've still got Clergy picked up a knock yesterday and also Dobbo. What's the latest on those two? Yeah, well, obviously we don't know if... Um, you know, probably until tomorrow with Jay, how how bad his was. Um, Dobbo, I think, it's probably a couple of weeks uh, with his ankle. He's uh, you know he's still sore. Um, yeah, you know, so hopefully we'll see Kev and whatever. Um, ben should be probably by the end of this week. Hopefully, um, uh, we'll have Searsy back for the weekend as well. Um, so you know, we we're getting there. We're getting there with you know. Uh, the only I, I I was worried about Jamie. I thought his was a real bad one, but. We're hoping it's not, you know. So, um, yeah, we, we, we're sort of getting there. We, we, you know, we could be very, very strong in, in, you know, sort of a week to two weeks' time. Uh, and one of the uh, management teams having a birthday this week. Yeah, yeah. John's uh, a big four O this week. So, uh, any any special celebrations with the boys? Well, actually, we've got. Um, he's having a fortieth uh, birthday party next Saturday um, after the Paulton game in Fleet, and uh, a number of the a number of the players will be. Uh, will be uh, joining and coming in, so uh, so that'll be good fun. Um, Are you going to be helping give him the bumps on Thursday? Oh, no After chance. the grief he gave you earlier. I know, I know. Uh, my, my arms would be too tired from, from doing too many. So, uh, no, um, yeah, no, it's, it's good. It's going to be, uh, you know, looking forward to the week now. And, you know, it's always it's always nice to have, uh, have a win under your belts, and especially one that's so satisfying against the Terry Brown and, you know, a, a side that are paying out, you know, a lot of money and, and the favourites for this and got ex-pros, it's, it's, it is a real nice feeling. Good. Well, enjoy that feeling and enjoy your week and we'll catch up with you soon. Lovely. Cheers, John. Cheers.